So, I ran out the Twilight series, so you don't have to. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Allie, and today we are diving in deep, okay? <laughs> I reread the Twilight series and unfortunately I didn't do reading vlogs for these because I never intended for this to be like a series um, but then <clears throat> excuse me but then I started reading them and I read the first one and then the second one then the third one then the fourth one and I was like I need to make a video about this because I just can't believe I just can't believe that there's a whole generation of us that like read these books and like embodied these books and are we like are we okay so I'm gonna dive into these books I'm gonna tell you what I thought of them and then Midnight Sun is getting here today so I will be doing a reading vlog of my reaction and all that stuff to Midnight Sun um this is a bonus video I listen I know that I don't actually have a schedule but in my head I would like my schedule to be Monday Wednesday Friday um and so um this is like a bonus video because I really want this to go up on the day Midnight Sun comes out so let's dive right in I read all four of them it took me like a month or two because I read some stuff in between because lord have mercy I could not I couldn't so obviously the first one suicide the first one I read was Twilight and I actually I remember I remember where I was when I bought this book I was in a bookstore in Elizabeth City North Carolina and I saw this book and the cover I mean look look how pretty it was and I all I needed it, it had everything I needed about three things I was absolutely positive first Edward was a vampire second there was a part of him and I don't know how dominant that part of him was that thirsted for my blood. And third, I was uncondition unconditionally, irrevocably in love with him. Yeah, I, that came out of the depths of my brain cells. So I remember seeing this and I was like, I have to have it, you know, whatever. This is my original copy. All of these are my original copies. All of them... Um, I can't remember if I bought New Moon the day it came out, like at Walmart, <laughs> but I know Breaking Dawn and Eclipse, I waited in line at midnight with my one of my parents, obviously, in order to purchase it. So I know those two I did, but this one I just bought on a whim, sat down, read it, and loved it. And what's so funny is when I decided to read it again, <laughs> I did not expect to like it. <laughs> I expected to just be like, like, I've reread some of the books that I was really into in childhood or middle school or whatever and been like, oh, that was okay, but like, you know, and get the feelings, like the nostalgia. But, is that my, sorry, I'm like waiting for the book right now. But this was like, I actually enjoyed it. Like, the writing of it is so soothing. And I was trying to explain this to someone that I feel like the writing of this book is so soothing because. Bella does a good job <laughs> just like methodically telling you everything she's doing and something about that to me is like it just soothes me and it helps me like flow through the story and it helps to like really um what's the word like you just you feel like you're there with her and she does these really mundane tasks that really help us understand that like she truly is just like a normal person and like the Bella that we think of, which is like Kristen Stewart Bella, is not the Bella that's like in these books. Um, and like, <laughs> it's so funny because like, I think Kristen Stewart is like a beautiful woman, but she's not Bella Swan in my opinion. Like Kristen Stewart is beautiful, like just in her own right, like in her own way. But like Bella Swan is like, like I always picture her as like an Alexis Bledel um, type character because she just had this like girl next door style and I think Kristen Stewart's very edgy and like her style's just like totally different than what Bella Swan is. Um, I also do not feel like Robert Pattinson was like a good interpretation of Edward because he was so lanky and I know that Edward is supposed to be like tall and skinny but like um, Olympic Coven if you uh, check out their Instagram I'll post a picture of their Edward and the guy that cosplays Edward is like perfect. Um, 
So anyway, I'm not going to go on a tangent. The only well-casted person, in my opinion, um, was Alice. Uh, the girl that played Alice I thought was like perfect. I also liked the person that played um, Emmett. Anyway, <laughs> I'm going off on a tangent. But hearing her do these mundane tasks just really like put into perspective like that she was a normal girl. I read this so fast. And oh, by the way, I'm sorry if you can hear screaming. Um, my neighbors are assholes and they let their kids just like roam the whole apartment complex without supervision and they scream and yell and it really pisses me off. Anyway, so I, I did really enjoy this um, and I did feel that like romantic pull that definitely like got me when I was like in middle school. Um, don't be alarmed because I, I have very different opinions about the rest of the books. You know, I see now things that I didn't see like the fact that he like climbs into her bedroom like that's that's creepy um but this was this was the most enjoyable read out of all of them um and the only reason that I continued was because I enjoyed this so much if I had not enjoyed this I wouldn't have reread all of them um this is not a ranking video but I would rank this number one um and, and all of these books it's so funny to me these are so long I was never overwhelmed by these books when I was in middle school but goddamn was I overwhelmed looking at them now like fucking how many pages is in here? 498 pages, that's a lot. And I was reading this in like seventh grade. Oh my God, there's also a TikToker who does these videos where she's like, <laughs> it's like me in middle school and she's like, she she like burns herself with a flat iron and she goes to school. And she's like, I can't tell you what this is from. And she like pretends to be a vampire. That was me, okay. So I loved that book, okay. I highly, <laughs> I just recommend like if you never read them like just pick them up they're available at all libraries now because everyone's ramping up for the you know the arrival of Midnight Sun so all public libraries have them now let's talk about undoubtedly the most boring book in the series and that is New Moon the only saving grace in this book was the friendship between Bella and Jacob but let me tell you let me fucking tell you I I was team Jacob without a doubt 100% the whole time like I really liked I was team Edward during this but then once I got to this when I was in middle school I was like fuck Edward Jacob is it um <laughs> Jacob is problematic okay um, I'm going to get into how Edward is problematic I promise you um, that comes more into play in Eclipse and Breaking Dawn but Jacob is like I get that like he was turning into a werewolf and that's why he was being an asshole but the he was so mean to her and very pushy and just do you I do you guys hear this <laughs> just not not a great guy and his dad was mean to her and just everyone was so judgmental and like so mean to Bella and I know Bella was mopey or whatever but like I didn't feel like she deserved like a lot of what she got you know like t the teenage years are very dramatic but I do feel like Bella like did a good job like I, I please like I know someone's gonna be like are you insane but I did not feel like Bella was that mopey and like that depressing I really didn't like she was obviously really sad that Edward left her and she makes a lot of like rash impulse decisions um, and her emotions are all over the place but, like she had a like traumatic event where she almost got oh by the way there <laughs> there are spoilers here so I'm not gonna put a spoiler alert because this entire video is a spoiler alert of a series that came out 15 years ago so like if you're mad at me for spoiling that I, I don't know what to tell you but anyway I didn't I just didn't feel like she was that mopey I mean she went through a traumatic event and like probably has some severe PTSD and also I think she takes a lot of what's happening to her in stride and I honestly feel like despite her being like very um, clumsy very meek um, at times she's really brave like I don't know like she's just I mean I don't know she's just not afraid of like all these things that people are telling her to be afraid of she's like no like you know whatever and I think it probably is a little bit, un bit unrealistic, but I think she has this like awareness about her where she like 
knows she knew when she met Edward that there was something up with him and then when stuff was going on with Jacob she knew something was up with him so rather than like closing herself off to the reality that like there's vampires and werewolves in the world she just kind of accepts it and like just takes it for what it is because there's not really another explanation for the things that are happening around her I don't know like I I did not have as big of an issue with Bella as I did like you know, like people t I'll talk a lot of shit about Bella because of the movie version, but Bella's actually like kind of a badass. So, um, anyway, back to this book. This book wasn't my favorite. It was just filled with like, you know, an on and off again friendship with Jacob where he's being an asshole for the most part. A lot of like, just, you know, some things that I wasn't a fan of. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I just wanted to like go on that tangent about Bella because I feel like she has a bad rap. Also, I do want to address that I know that like these books have their issues in terms of race and gender stereotypes and all that stuff. I, I completely am not like discrediting that at all. And I don't want my voice as a white person to like overpower those that like have genuine like feelings and opinions about it. Um, but I do think like for the time like Native American people like were never like they just weren't like there wasn't mainstream books like written about Native American people and while I get that they're like a side story in this and I also I didn't take the, I, I'm just gonna admit I didn't take the time to research so there's probably a lot of inaccuracies in this but just the fact that they were represented was cool for the time I don't think it's cool now like our standards are a bit higher but I did want to point that out. There's a lot of problematic stuff in here and we know it and we accept it now and it's just the way it is and I wish it was different but it is what it is. Um, but I am aware of it and I don't want you to think that I'm just blindly ignoring it. So that was definitely my least favorite book of the series. I didn't enjoy it. It took me forever to read. So then I also this this book was kind of annoying too and let me explain stop recording I felt like this book was kind of like a filler book and I kind of felt that way about New Moon too like I get that they had to break up for her to build this relationship with Jacob and then when she built the, the relationship with Jacob she was able to find out that he was a werewolf um but like I I literally just read this and I couldn't tell you anything that happened um oh yeah this is the one <laughs> this is the one where there's like a bunch of killings by newborn vampires and they they have like a werewolf team up um and they kind of I don't want to say they completely skip over but like there's some drama at the end of breaking so every story is kind of the same there's like the story and then the kind of climax if you will is this new vampire slash werewolf enemy and so in um, Twilight, you're introduced to vampires that uh, feed on people, which is different than what um, like Edward's family feeds off of. And um, they're kind of like the enemy or whatever. And then they, he tries to kidnap Bella and like tries to kill her or whatever. Um, and they end up killing him. And as a result, now there's a girl named Victoria who was James's mate, I believe, or Lauren's mate, I don't remember, um, who now is like vengeful towards Bella. So then in New Moon, the drama is Edward, I don't know, feels like he put her life in danger or whatever, breaks up with her and then goes to the, um, oh no, like Victoria, this is so confusing. Victoria's like following them around and he thinks that Bella died. So he goes to kill himself in front of the Volteri. So you're introduced to like the vampire royal family or whatever. And that's kind of like the big drama. So then in here, there's a bunch of killings in the Seattle area. And at first I think it's a werewolf because that's also when people report sightings of like these giant werewolves this kind of puts a riff and the werewolves are like this isn't us and it turns out that it's a bunch of newborn vampires so this is when the werewolves and the vampires join and form an alliance to defeat these newborn vampires that's basically the extent of the story it's also like bella and edward fighting about whether she should turn because now the Volteri gave them a deadline to where like she has to turn at a certain point so yeah this one i liked it better than new moon which doesn't say much because i really hated new moon but yeah it's just it kind of its sole purpose in my opinion is that it sets the stage for breaking dawn and everything that happens in breaking dawn 
and yeah it was like so boring it took me forever to read so I want to get to my second favorite one which is also the longest one and it's Breaking Dawn this one is like 700 something pages um and I oh also because I said I would talk about it this is where Edward's Edward gets wait is there oh, wait a second I thought my window was cracked okay this is where Edward begins to like in my opinion become like a very unhealthy partner um and like get kind of controlling over Bella and has her I mean he, she was lying to Charlie and like New Moon and Twilight for sure but this is where it's like he completely like separates her from her entire family in my opinion which is definitely the sign of like an abusive relationship and I think it's like if you want the like definition of like abuse like or at least emotional abuse like separation from family and all that stuff like this is it it's like not it's not my favorite part of this series for sure it's like very uncomfortable I found nothing about this book romantic like even their discussions of marriage and stuff like I did not find romantic at all and this like toxicity between Edward and Jacob were really odd because he kept saying that he was like giving Bella agency to choose but like I didn't feel like that was the case at all so so yeah I I struggled with this one a lot but just for that reason as well so let's get into Breaking Dawn everything I've said is still the same but I enjoyed this book a lot more just because this book was interesting because the setting changed a lot so like in the first book the settings that you have are Forks and you are introduced to like Port Angeles, the Meadow and then Arizona and then in New Moon you're introduced to Seattle, um, you're introduced to Italy, um, I think that's it <laughs> and then um, in Eclipse they don't really go anywhere as far as I, I remember like they go to the Meadow again but they don't really go anywhere but here they you're introduced to this whole like wide world web or whatever of vampires and it's really cool um and I really like that you kind of delve more into the history like Jacob gets his own scenes in these which is really cool because you learn that actually in all technical terms uh Jacob is the alpha and so you see him like break off from the group and like form his own alliances with Leah and Sam I believe it's Leah and Leah and have it on the back of Seth uh, Leah and Seth and this is also the book where Edward and Bella get married and their wedding is obviously super romantic and really beautiful here you go Stephanie and they go on this lovely honeymoon to South America and they stay in this villa and it's really nice um, but then you see like Bella um, the maid has kind of like a reaction to her and you come to find out Bella gets pregnant um, and we all know this because we've all seen the TikToks of like the Bella baby and so she ends up she gets pregnant and the book sets itself up for us to realize that the Volteri is going to like come after them because the the baby um, they don't know how it's like going to be because there hasn't been like a baby vampire since Tanya's sister created one which was very bad like they were like not good kids you know they're kind of like the kids that are outside my apartment right now um, but they just weren't good kids and so Bella ends up having the baby and it's like really traumatic and she has to turn like she's forced to turn sooner than she had initially planned and um, come to find out the baby is not actually a full vampire um, it's like part human possibly part werewolf that's like not super explored um, and she just develops like really really fast so the I think the saddest part of this book for me is that Alice isn't in it she goes off to find one of these children um, so that she can bring it as a witness because they realize that really the only way that they're going to be able to like save Bella and the baby is to get all these witnesses to testify that like the baby isn't harmful um, so you get to meet like all these different vampires which is really cool um, and again like the werewolves are there and they're part of it too because this is like problematic to everyone Jacob imprints on the baby 
I, to be honest, like I didn't feel as weird about it even reading it now as an adult. And I know that that's problematic to say with everything going on, with like child trafficking and grooming and all that stuff. But I don't know. It, and also it kind of like felt like, it, I do agree with what people say that it kind of feels like a metaphor for like child pedophilia being like a sexual orientation. Um, but like this wasn't the first time it happened. It happened to one of the other werewolves too, where he imprinted on like a six year old and just became like a father figure for her until she was old enough and whatever. And their ages are also halted. So that's like another aspect of it. I don't want to, I, I know I'm going to get a lot of like shit for this. But I don't want to focus on it too much because like whether I agree with it or not, it exists. I'm not saying I support it. I'm not saying I don't support it. I think that like, it was probably a mistake on Stephanie Meyer's part, um, but I think that she wrote it the way that she did for a reason. She wrote like her accelerated growth to be the way it was because she knew that Jacob was gonna imprint on her. And in order for her to know that, for Bella to know that she would be safe if she had to go away, she had to form an alliance with someone that was outside the vampire world. So forming an alliance with Jacob is would be the better way to do it but like Jacob was so mad about what the baby was doing to Bella's health that really the only way he could forgive it was like this because he's hard-headed or whatever I don't know I don't want to dive too deep into it because I'm going to get shit for it either way I mean no matter what I say about it it, it is what it is it happened so there's something I can do uh it's in the book so whether I agree with it or not it already exists in the world so that is an interesting part of it um but you also get more from Rosalie, which Rosalie has turned into like one of my favorite characters ever because her character is really interesting and she's one of those people that's like very sassy and like open with her sexuality and like just, I don't know, she, I learned, a, you learn more about Rosalie like in this book. I think you do an eclipse too and like kind of why Rosalie like attaches herself so much with Bella. Um, and a lot of people will argue that she only attached herself to Bella because of the baby, but it was almost like I felt like the baby like brought them closer. And then it, all, and her turning into a vampire brought her closer with Emmett. Um, Esme like did not exist in this book, which was kind of odd. Yeah, so I overall really liked it. Um, I didn't feel like it was rushed at all. I felt like they could have cut stuff out or even made it into like a two part book. Like if they would have made like Bella getting pregnant, the baby, and then have it end when like Tanya's sister like sees the child and then like making that the point where it ends like that probably would have been better but again not my tea I didn't write the book so this was definitely my second favorite I just really enjoyed it so if I was ranking them number one would be Twilight number two would be Breaking Dawn Number three would probably be Eclipse, even though it was boring. And then New Moon, we can just throw in the trash. So I don't know what the point of this was. I just wanted to give like an analysis of what I thought reading the Twilight series as an adult. It was definitely interesting. I definitely viewed it differently. But some of my opinions didn't actually change, like with Renesme. And like how I felt about that didn't change. I mean, I never found that romantic. I always found that kind of like, oh, I don't know. That makes me like kind of uncomfortable. But like, I was kind of surprised that my, I was sure that my, I was going to be like disgusted. Um, I also was surprised that like my opinion towards Jacob in general changed. Um, and then some of my favorite characters were actually like not the same ones as when I read before. Like, I actually really loved Bella. I loved her both as a vampire and not as a vampire. And I didn't even talk about like her powers. Her power was like to be able to like block out other powers, which I found super cool because as a human, she could block out Edward and everyone else's like powers, which I found really, really cool. And then Renesmee had powers and I don't know, it was just really interesting. Um, I think like the magic system of vampires is still not well explained, like why some people have powers and like some people don't. But ultimately like rereading it made me super excited for Midnight Sun. I don't think I would have been nearly as excited had all this not happened during quarantine, I will admit. But ultimately like I'm really excited, I don't know. Um, I think if you're going to read it for the first time, like I'm very interested to see what people's reaction 
is reading it for your first time as an adult because I think my opinion would have been definitely different had I not read it as a child because I had a lot of those like nostalgia feels so yeah guys that's it for me um thank you so much for watching please hit that subscribe button make sure you like this video or dislike it it's all engagement and let me know in the comments if you're excited for midnight sun like I said I'm going to do a reading vlog of my reactions it's not going to be spoiler free so yeah thank you so much for watching I'll see you in my next one bye